everyone and welcome back to another video on Lumber Capital Log Yard. Today I'm going to be telling you the most important things you need to know about your sawmill blades. In a way, your blade is the most important part on your mill. It's the difference between poor quality and good quality lumber. So a lot of time is spent here at the log yard paying attention to the detail and making sure that the blade is running smoothly and producing a good quality product. The first thing I want to talk to you guys about is some signs to indicate a dull blade because it can be challenging to tell sometimes if you're not familiar with these things I'm going to talk about and you can't expect any quality lumber to come from a dull blade. Um, I have run dull blades many times before. I've made them work when I've had to, but there's some little things that I start to notice that are clear indicators to me that it's time to change a blade and I'm going to share them with you here today. The first sign that indicates a dull blade but doesn't always is when you get this hair or you know splinters, whatever you want to call it, um, on the edge of your board. It usually happens on the side that your blade's coming out of. So not necessarily the side that's going in, but the side that's coming out. As you can see, it's on that side and not on this side. Um, so sometimes that can indicate a dull blade. It doesn't always, the reason why I say that is because it really depends on the species of wood that you're cutting. It can drastically vary depending on what you're cutting on your mill. So this doesn't always work, but you'll find that that applies to a lot of things I'm gonna say here today because really in the end it's just so circumstantial there's no set rule to anything but uh anyhow moving on the next thing is i think you can see it here a little bit this might not show up on camera very well but there is a little bit of a wave right here over that knot now hemlock knots are exceptionally harder than the wood so we do get some waving on them even with a good blade but generally it should cut them th through them just fine. I mean, it does even vary from log to log even. Sometimes I'll get a log where the knots are just so hard. It doesn't matter if it's a brand new blade on it, it's gonna go waving right over them. But generally speaking, that's not supposed to happen. So if you are getting any kind of waving, probably a sign of a dull blade. One last sign I wanted to mention to you guys was if while you're running your mill, you notice that you have to start slowly pushing the mill a little bit harder to go the same speed. That's probably just your blade dulling out because if you have a really sharp blade on there, that, that machine can go like really fast. So what I've noticed is if I'm just running not the best blades, I can't go as fast. I literally just have to push the machine harder to go the same speed and you can hear it uh, just struggling a little bit harder and obviously if there's a solution to that, I mean it's not meant to, to push really, it's just struggle to get through that log. It's not right, something needs to change if that's how it is. So dull blade generally now a lot of people a lot a lot of people ask me how long our blades last and i can never give quite a straight answer to that because there isn't one once again my answer my answer is just it's so circumstantial it depends on what kind of tree you're cutting obviously what kind of wood if it's hardwood it's gonna dull out a lot faster that would be a given um but we also break blades, we're running resharps. We don't get the same life out of a resharp as we do a new blade. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. I'm going to talk a little bit more about our resharps here in a second, um, but let's move on to the next thing here. Now, as far as what type of blade you're running, that will matter. Right now we have on a seven degree blade. Um, it is a brand new one, not a resharp and we find that seven degrees work the best for a normal hemlock log, not nothing frozen. When it comes to frozen logs or something harder than a softwood, so like 
uh, pine or hemlock. Um, we move to like a four degree. We find that the four degree just, you have to go a little bit slower. You do, it, the blade does move a little slower, but it's uh, just a much stronger blade and can really like get through, um, get through anything tough. Like if you have any frozen logs or really tough hardwoods. So the reason why we wouldn't prefer a four degree is because it does move slower. Uh, when you get to some of the longer toothed ones, uh, they're super aggressive and can just shred through logs and you can just go super fast on them. Um, they don't work as well for the hemlock because like I said, the knots are super tough in hemlock. And so we find that we need something a little bit in between and that for us is the seven degree blade. Um, that's just more of our summer one. Uh, we haven't had much trouble with frozen logs, actually all this winter, uh, but we've had winters where it was really bad. Like it made it so we couldn't really operate the mill during that time until the logs thawed out because it was just so bad. And four degree blades were our savior. I mean, literally like, it made it doable, um, but we had some really tough, tough logs uh, in the past. But like I said, no trouble this year. I know that we have had a pretty mild winter, but um, definitely if it's happened before, it can happen again. So that is how we handle that. So I'm in the office here where we store our blades, and this is all of our resharps here. Um, we have, looks like, five left. Um, and then this is actually resharps as well, but these are nine degree. If you get a closer look here, you can actually see a little bit of a difference between the degrees. You can see it's what the nine degree look like, and this would be a seven degree. So I'll have to do another video in the future about actually our resharpening process. We have all of the uh, tools and what it takes to do these uh, resharps. And my grandfather, he resharpens all of our blades for us. And he's just spent a lot of time trying to figure out the exact art of doing it because it's a lot harder than you might think actually, a lot more thought goes into it than we previously expected when we were thought we had the great idea of, oh, just resharpening our, our blades, right? Well, it's, it's a lot more complicated than just that. Um, and I did make a video quite a while back on it, uh, but I think it's probably time for, for a new update on that. Anyhow, he does all of our resharps for us and he does a pretty good job. Um, and so we do have to like, anytime we chip a tooth, um, obviously if we break the blade it's trash. If we chip a tooth, unfortunately, they don't really work to resharp. We've tried it with like, if there's only one tooth that's missing, or sometimes we can get by with one tooth. If there's more than one, not really. We end up having to chuck them if they are missing teeth because it just doesn't really work, unfortunately. So, but besides that, besides them breaking or missing teeth, uh, basically they should be just fine to resharpen and use again and we've gotten I think he's said five resharps out of just a single blade before so we're definitely getting our money's worth out of it and even if it breaks after five times of resharpening it we still got plenty of our money's worth out of it even if we had to end up throwing throwing it away in the end which will eventually be what happens to probably all of these as they get old and they also heat up on the mill and stretch and just that heating and stretching and then cooling and then it just it makes it brittle so eventually that will probably be what happens to all of these um, but there's a lot more that goes into it than just resharpening it, resharpening it, unfortunately. And we just keep the new ones in a box here. So you can see that's just how they come and we don't move them out of their little box. We just take them out as we need them. So the reason why we would put on a new one and why we keep new ones in stock is because just in case we run out of resharps, first of all because if we run out of resharps and we don't have any more blades, well, we can't really wait for new ones to be resharpened because we're milling, what the heck, we have to get stuff done. So we do have backups. And also because they're new, they are better. I mean, that that is the unfortunate part about resharpening them. They'll never be a new blade. Um, they just, 
they, they're different. They're not, they're not as great. So because of that, we keep new ones in there just in case we come across like a really tricky log that just doesn't want to cut like some of the logs I was discussing with the really just challengingly hard knots and it just wants to wave. Put on a new blade and it works a lot better than a reshark. So sometimes we'll do that. And that's why we keep them in stock. I can't do a blade video without at least mentioning the debarker here. That is a major part of what preserves blades. Right now, our debarker is actually down. It is not working. We have not used it here in quite, some, uh, quite a while, but our hemlock has been pretty clean. As you can see, there's not a lot of uh, dirt and rocks stuck in the bark, and that's what the debarker protects the blade from because if you think about it these logs are being pulled through the dirt and mud um, up on the mountain so sometimes they can get really dirty sometimes not as much but all that dirt really really dulls the blade because the blades meant to cut through wood not stone right so that's why it's a great investment to get this little add-on it's an option for the wood miser uh, but we we of course invested in it and um, it, it does it does go a long way to protecting the blade from unneeded damage that's it for today's video everyone i hope that you enjoyed if you did make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already also you can follow us on instagram at lumber capital log yard to keep up with all the extra fun that we don't share here on youtube also also actually actually you can go and check out our merch shop as well i leave a link down in the description of all my videos we have cool just durable outdoor workwear Carhartt stuff and this cool hoodie I always wear. I think we have that available on there as well. We have a lot of cool stuff. You should go and check it out. Other than that, I guess I'll see you guys next time.